Hey, I managed to watch The Matrix Resurrections over the weekend and it was pretty okay. The movie sort of inspired me to complete the cover of The Matrix Awakens on my channel. I did some additional research, gathered some interesting facts and compiled them into one video. And so, let me invite you for a detailed But first, let's go back to May 2020. This has to be the right way. That's when Epic first unveiled the future of its flagship product, the Unreal Engine 5 technical demo, powered by PlayStation 5. This presentation was intended to introduce developers and players in themselves to two rather revolutionary technologies, Nanite and Lumen. Nanite is, by definition, a new virtualized geometry system for Unreal Engine 5, which uses a new internal mesh format and rendering technology to render pixel scale detail and high object counts. The developers at Epic boast that it is possible to directly import photogrammetry scanned objects without any visible loss of quality in the assets. What's more, the technology allows such objects to be scaled in real time, again with almost no loss in quality. Lumen, on the other hand, is a new global dynamic lighting system that calculates in real time the realistic behavior of light rays and their reflection on surfaces. This means that when creating a scene, developer can instantly see what the scene will look like and choose the most appropriate setting. Lumen also offers ray tracing support for reflections, but we'll cover that aspect when we examine the matrix itself. But before that happens, let's make another leap in time. I could be one of many. It's February 2020. Epic introduced to the world the MetaHuman, a virtual human creator. A new tool that allows you to create digital characters very easily and quickly. This functionality will also be used in the Matrix. Okay, dry text and few computer generated shots may look cool, but is it really such a revolution that I tried to tell you in this video? Well, let me use two examples. The first one is a direct comparison of technological demos of, uh, of Unreal Engine 4 and 5. Please pay attention to the detail of objects, the amount of them visible on the screen, or even the physics. And now the light. Do I need to add anything more? Sure, I've compared the technology demos here, which are several years apart, and it's obvious that Unreal Engine 4 was constantly being improved during that time. But my idea behind that was to present the differences between demos released before the actual release of both tools. Can you imagine what UE5 will allow us to do in a few years? Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace. Let's have another quick look at the evolution of MetaHuman. The first presentation of this tool took place in 2018, showing the digitalized character of Andy Serkis and Siren, played by Chinese actress Binji Zhang. For the creation of these models, the actors were scanned, however, this allowed us to have an idea of what effect Epic was aiming for at the time. Was it achieved? Judge by yourself. Alright, now that we have assimilated the theory, it is time to get down to the nitty gritty of this film. We will now answer the question, what is The Matrix Awakens? I think that first of all we should realize that we are not dealing with a game in the literal sense of the word. Epic has given into the hands of players demo version of their powerful tool to prove how advanced this technology is, while allowing you to check it not on powerful computers, but on available to everyone consumer hardware, which is why they decided to make available versions for current generation consoles. We're already approaching the moment of analysis of the hero of today's episodes, but before we get into that point, I would like to give you a few interesting facts. 
You must know that the team of about 70 people is responsible for creating it. And it was noted that the main core was only 30 developers. The rest came and go during the development of the project. The demo is divided into two larger sequences, separated by a flight over the city to showcase the main technologies implemented in Unreal Engine 5. The opening sequence of the demo is an impressive demonstration of UE5 graphics rendering capability. The developers deliberately recreate shots from the original film, making the viewer wonder if that's what we're seeing is real. Now take a look at how these graphics compare to the Wachowski's iconic work. Shockingly accurate, right? And do you remember the rubber Keanu from The Matrix Reloaded? This is how his character looks like on Xbox Series S, the weakest next-gen console at the moment. Right on. Moving on, we see a mix of footage with live actors and the same characters digitally generated. It's as if the creators wanted to put us to the test of recognizing what is and what isn't real. So, are you able to recognize computer graphics from reality? The moment when Carrie and Moss appears on screen is actually a fragment that is pre-rendered. The developers explained that due to the number of characters visible on screen at one time, they were unable to provide satisfactory fluidity on consoles, so they decided to use video instead of real-time graphics. They also assured that what we see was fully generated by Unreal Engine 5, only on a more powerful platform. The next scene is a return to graphics generated by the console hardware. What we have here is a truly cinematic shot, which frame rate has been reduced to 24 frames per second, the gold standard for this type of moving images, to give it that cinematic feel, if you will. The entire sequence is brilliantly directed, bringing to mind the iconic highway chase scene from the original trilogy. What's interesting here is the fact that the creators from Epic show us a juxtaposition of characters created on basis of scans of real actors, only to show us a man generated by MetaHuman a moment later. The differences in quality are rather hard to spot, which itself is very impressive. The shooting section is also a demonstration of the physics calculated by the engine, specifically the module responsible for it, called Chaos. The developers ensure that all car crashes are not scripted, but counted in real time. Moreover, they clearly emphasize that the whole ride takes place in the same city, which we can freely explore in a later part of the demo. It is in no way a special part of the scenery cut out and rendered separately without burdening the processors with a larger area. And since I mentioned the ability to explore freely, I guess it's time to take to the streets of Megacity. Let's start with some impressive numbers. On top of that, there are numerous high-quality objects scattered all over the place, complex architecture, almost unlimited exploration and interactive vehicles. Most of the parked cars can be snatched and we can throw ourselves without restraint into the maze of the city streets. Interestingly, a specially written system of mass artificial intelligence is responsible for all these, let's call them, living objects, which is not limited to calculating the behavior of pedestrians and moving vehicles in the closest vicinity of the player, but embraces the object globally. To better illustrate this, let me use the built-in functionality of highlighting these objects. Let's now fly high above the roof of the buildings. Impressive, isn't it? 
In the previous paragraph devoted to the chase sequence, I mentioned the advanced physics of objects. At this point, it is worth mentioning a limitation of which the developers are well aware. The problem is the destruction system, or rather, the deformation mesh of objects, such as scar bodies during the collisions. At the moment, Nanite doesn't deal with this aspect very well, and we can experience visible drops in animation. Epic has addressed this issue by making vehicles become standard rasterized objects during the collisions. Developers are sure, however, that in the future the problem will be solved. Just as the first Unreal Engine presentation from 2020 couldn't boast the use of ray traced reflections due to the scenery being poor in reflective surfaces, the streets of Megacity, however, are literally dripping in such details and objects, showcasing the effect in its full glory. I should point out, however, the demo uses a hybrid solution mixing the advantages of ray tracing and standard screen space reflections. Nevertheless, the whole thing looks simply impressive. Staying still in the subject of lighting, the demo version allows you to manipulate the position of the sun so we can observe how the light behaves in motion. As well as switching between day and night. This is a particularly interesting option. At the moment of change, in the way we are turning off the sun, so that the only sources of light became the windows of buildings. Street lamps, car headlights and so on, although they simulate light, are not treated here as light sources per se. The authors note, however, that this functionality is still in beta version and they are still working on its improvement. We still have to discuss the topic of performance and the resolution in which the demographics are displayed on different platforms. The current build on each platform offers a dynamic resolution upscaled to the highest possible output values, respectively 1080p for Xbox Series S and 1620p for Xbox Series X and PS5. It's also worth noting that according to Digital Foundry's finding, in scenes where black bars are displayed on the edges of the screen, the, the engine only renders the area between those barriers. In such situations, depending on the scene, we are dealing with non-standard resolutions such as 2560 by 1055 for Xbox Series X and PS5. Of course, upscaling does have some noticeable effects, we, such as a visible artifacts around characters when maneuvering the camera, or a grainy blur effect on objects in motion. As such, as the PS5 and Xbox Series X version present a very similar level of performance, in the case of Series S we receive a clearly inferior quality. I'm talking about missing details such as reflections, less clear or completely unpresent elements of the environment. The very fact of much lower resolution in which the weakest next-gen console renders graphics makes the image much more blurred. I'll also add that the actual rendering values are sometimes even much lower than 720p. And last but not least, frame rate performance. Well, we should not feel disappointed with the fact that we get rather a stable experience, where the average frame rate is at the level of 30 frames per second, which, considering the scale of the city, the simultaneous counting of thousands of objects in real time, and the freedom in exploration is really impressive. Sure. Dips happen and they are very easy to cause, such as by performing the aforementioned car crashes or moving quickly among dense buildings in drone mode. Nevertheless, I am far from accusing the authors of taking the easy way out and releasing an unplayable mess. And so, The Matrix Awakens presents itself, a production that by no means should be seen as a full-fledged game, moreover, it probably will never become one. It is nothing less than a demonstration of very impressive technology, which in capable hands can achieve truly spectacular results. Not only in games. 
There are well-known examples of using the Unreal Engine in film production, such as Mandalorian series. Some time ago, some behind-the-scenes footage appeared online showing how scenes for the series were created using the technology. A very interesting topic, and I'll leave a direct link into the video description if you're interested. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys!